Okay, so I'm going to take some time here to uh, go over the reading by just speaking to these images that we have here uh, and some of those key points in your text. Uh, so as I go through this, if you're looking to further develop your notes, please do you know, stop, pause, go back to some things I say. And again, let me know if you have questions as you're going through this. So I'm going to hit on the two questions. So I'll just go back to the slide real quick. Uh, how does the structure of Congress and Parliament contrast, really? So that's what I'll start talking about first, and I'm just gonna be referencing these here. So uh, one of the first things is the fact that in Congress, it's really executive versus legislative, or it can be that. Uh, this is where our system of separation of powers and checks and balances comes into play uh, because the executive and legislative branch are separate. So that can certainly lead to issues, which we'll look at a little bit later down the line. Uh, we'll talk about some of the issues that uh, a Democratic controlled House has struggled with to convince President Trump, uh, as well as a Senate controlled, uh, excuse me, a Republican controlled Senate uh, to deal with the issues that people in this country are uh, struggling with right now in the midst of the pandemic, as Congress has attempting, may have already passed one, but looking to pass additional bills uh, to help those who have lost a job and who are struggling financially, because uh, it is, is tough times right now. Whereas the key difference uh, with parliament is the executive is really accountable uh, to the legislative branch, which you can see here. Another way of thinking about this is the heads of government for parliament uh, <clears throat> really, or excuse me, the heads of government, yeah, yeah, for parliament really grow out of the legislature. Uh, think about instead of for us where these two are separate uh, purposely, Right, so that can breed inherent tensions and things of that sort. Whereas, think of these as intermixed. Uh, so that's a big, big difference right there. So in other words, like when the president puts together his cabinet or his top advisors, those are not members of the legislative branch. But uh, when the prime minister is putting together his or her uh, you know, top leadership, cabinet, all those different positions, that's actually being pulled from the legislative level. So that's a, a key, key difference. Now, uh, second one is that members of Congress are more powerful than members of parliament. And that's baked into the system. Uh, the fact, and there's really two things here. One, and I'll look into this or I'll talk to you more about this tomorrow. There's a lot more perks if you're a member of Congress more salary, more staff, more office space. Uh, whereas if you're in parliament, like you don't get much, uh, especially if you're a new person, low level, things of that sort. So <clears throat> that also leads to the other difference between these two, which is where in uh, our system of government here, especially with this being a republic with a form of federalism, meaning that uh, when, you know, if you're a representative or a senator, when you go to DC, the number one thing that you're thinking about is your constituency base. So if I'm a senator, I'm worried about the entirety of my state. Whereas if I am a representative, I'm worried about my specific district. And when I go to Congress, because they're the ones who reelect me and I'm not wholly beholden to the party, just think back to what we talked about in unit one, really with the lessening of party strength at that time, uh, uh, that we were talking about at that time. So when these guys go off to uh, Congress in DC, they have so much more freedom and individuality to push for legislation uh, that will benefit their constituency base. And really they have so much more ability to impact the legislative process. Whereas in parliament, it's very different. I'll talk about that a little bit here. So. Uh, I think about members who go to Congress. Uh, I, I will call them like independent representatives. Whereas if I were somebody who was serving in parliament, I'm gonna say I have to be a loyal party member. So again, that goes back to the fact that Congress represents a constituent base while parliament represents a national party. That point in of itself is really key because again, if I'm going to represent, you know, uh, the needs of my district from Texas and I'm a Republican, you know, that could still look different than if I'm a Republican from the state of New York. 
because obviously Texas and New York are very far away. And thus, even though uh, both sets are Republicans, they could have different views. And that, again, is reflective of the decentralized nature of our government, uh, how big we are, things of that sort. Whereas uh, if I'm in parliament, like it is essential to toe the party line due to really uh, the way the election system works. So um, <clears throat> this just ties to another thing, which I'll, I'll just hit on a little bit. But basically in these elections even, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, congressional elections, but a lot of what we talked about in Unit 1 really applies here. So um, even though representatives in Congress are selected based on their party, obviously, uh, with how polarized we are, you know, uh, Democrats aren't going to be out there voting for Republicans, vice versa, very much. But <clears throat> predominantly, like we're selecting people based on their personality and their message. Whereas uh, for Parliament, because you actually have to have the party put you on the ticket, uh, <clears throat> then, you know, you, you got to tow that party line. You have to have a message that the party uh, supports. You can't really deviate from that. So that's a key difference uh, between Congress and Parliament. So there are some strengths and weaknesses that comes for this, uh, from this. One, uh, some of the strengths this is for us, excuse me, be, uh, for, car for Parliament. Excuse me, we're not Parliament. Uh, that's what I was looking at when I said that. Congress comparative to Parliament. Like we have a system of separation of powers and checks and balances, uh, even though that doesn't always function as well as we would like in our polarized times. Like there's certainly benefits to that, as we've talked about. That just goes back to what we looked at before, uh, ensuring compromise, uh, which allows all these different views that we have in our country to come together, uh, ensuring, you know, a dictator doesn't lead, uh, things like that. Again, uh, second one, I'll be repetitive here, but greater freedom uh, for members of Congress to represent their constituency base and fight for their interests. Like, that's core to us, and that's cool. Uh, because if we're going to pass this national ball, it's great to have the views of the people down south, uh, out west, in the northeast, put into this mm -hmm. because of the fact that, again, we're decentralized, we're big, and we have so many different types of people in this country. So within that, because of the fact that the legislative and the executive branch kind of compete or can compete, uh, it definitely forces compromise. And again, that goes back to all those things that I was just hitting on and some of the key things that uh, just were embedded into the system with uh, checks and balances, separation of power. So a lot of that should be coming back into your head. Folks. Now for weaknesses, um, it's the lack of party unity, right? So uh, it can be a lack of party power. In other words, you could be the majority party in both houses of the legislative branch, yet at the same time, uh, you could still struggle um, to actually get stuff passed. So we've seen that in times of what's called unified government. And that's basically when uh, one party controls both houses and the executive branch. And that's what we saw after President Trump won the 2016 general election. He had controlled the executive, obviously, the Republicans, but the Republicans also controlled both houses uh, in the legislature. Yet at the same time, they still struggled to pass policy. And that's because that Republican uh, from Texas and that Republican from New York can be very different in terms of what they want on a singular topic. And we'll look at different things like that uh, throughout this week. So a um, couple other things. This is why we have polarization as well. You know, the system of separation of power, separation of uh, checks and balances. I didn't say that right, but I think you know what I meant. Separation of powers and checks and balances, though great uh, when it's difficult to compromise within a party, let alone between parties. Uh, even again, just think about, you know, the socialist base of the Democrats uh, and the more moderate base of the Democrats. Um, you know, if they were to take back control of the executive and the legislative branch, um, I would expect because of the opposition from Republicans and because of the divisions within the party itself, 
for them to struggle to pass uh, whatever big ideas uh, Biden's going to be putting out there or that the Democrats would push, again, because of that divide. And uh, it's a couple other things, you know, you can get these things called professional politicians. We'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. The perks of being in Congress are nice. Uh, they're really nice. You live a good life if you have that job. And some people like to continue that life. So that can be a negative thing because, uh, again, the lack of accountability to the party allows that to become the truth or the you know, life for them. And decrease accountability of the executive branch is another con. So again, the pros and cons are really baked into this. You know, sometimes it'd be easier if uh, the legislative and the executive would be on the same page to push forth legislation so that we could get immediate reaction to the needs that we have as a country, like we're seeing right now. Instead, uh, because of the divisions within the legislative branch, within the parties, uh, between the parties, between uh, the president, the Democrats, the president, and some Republicans, uh, our reaction to this pandemic has been slow. Our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and people are, are struggling because of that. And that is a product of the system. So I'm gonna stop talking there, uh, but you're going to see on here, I'm putting two videos up on the same module. So one obviously we just hit on that. And then the next one's to introduce that next activity. Mm -hmm.